Right, apologies for standing up here and talking to you. I know it's not a huge amount, of you, but I'm recording it because I know a few people watch the recordings. So what I'm going to do today, because it's we're more or less at the end, more or less at the start of summer, um, I'm going to go through the time management of this. And this shouldn't take too long, and I've got a way of doing it which should make it reasonably easy. Um, so uh, I'll qu quickly flick through it, and hopefully that will help with your time management as well, because the worst thing you can do is spend ages and ages and get stuck on one particular problem, and then not hand it in, um, because that would be a disaster. So, um, first bit, which isn't quite to do with time management, I googled how to get an A star in my computer science project, and I, I found this bit of advice, it comes from another student, it's not a, written by a teacher or anything, but I thought there was some good stuff in there. Um, so it says, whilst I, somebody said, how do I get an A star in my computer science project, and the answer was, whilst I'm doing uh, OCR computer science, the only real advice I can offer you is meet the objectives. Thought, yeah, that's a very, very good thing to do. Um, meet the objectives. And the objectives are all written in that document, which uh, you can get by typing h446 forward slash 03 um, project. And it's the first link that comes up, the OCR document, with all the analysis and everything else in it. I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, marking CS projects is an objective thing. So unfortunately, it's not a question of did you get it right or did you get it wrong. It's subjective and people and misinterpret what you're saying. So if you meet the objectives and you use the headings, which I've been saying all along, um, it's worth doing uh, because it makes it easier for you to get that grade. And you just have to satisfy the criteria given by OCR in their specification as best you can. Uh, and then he says that he's currently on track to receive uh, somewhere in the region of 90% plus. Um, so this is the last slide. I'm not going to read you out loads and loads. Um, in terms of the design phase, so we, this is where we should be now, um, try to make as many useful prototypes on paper before making digital copies. So don't go in and start putting your till system screens together and everything else. Design them on paper first. Um, give them annotations, criticise them and then communicate with your clients. Um, most of you haven't got an actual real life client, um, but you can communicate with who you think should be using it or use a best guess um, to say how they would feel. So if you're designing a game, well you're in the right age group for games, how would you feel about this particular game? Can you make any changes to make it better? And my daughter's put loads of uh, video games on my phone. Whenever I lend it to them, like for example yesterday I drove back from London and they uh, wanted to watch YouTube in the back. I've got my phone back and there's about 15 different games on there. Um, and there's one of them called Aqua Park. Uh, if anyone's played this, but basically you've got to go down a big slide and beat other players. And the first level is really hard to get used to. You've got to move the character sort of left and right on this slide, you've got to overtake other people, and you can fly off the edge of the slide really easily. So one of my criticisms for that might be, well maybe on the first level, make the edges of the slide a bit higher. You're so allowed to fly off the side and you can catch it on one bit of the slide. If you played it, and land on a bit of slide. yeah, you played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I can't do that. I miss the slide. No, I only played it once. But discovered it this morning. But that sort of thing, you can criticise. You can criticise your initial designs before you go ahead and build it. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, what, what else was he saying? Um, always, always make sure you you have your client sign beneath the design headers. If you can get someone to sign it off, that's great, it looks professional, but don't worry too much if you can't. Um, and in terms of your software development phase, just document your code succinctly. Don't document things that you wouldn't need to, such as how you intend to place a button in a Windows form, say. Um, I'm currently using Unity in my computer science project, and I'm only documenting the code. This is sufficient alongside screenshots and testing and iteration aims. So where he stops, he says, just document your code, that's sufficient. I just wanted to get in there. Make sure you put screenshots for everything you do as well. But what he's saying here is quite useful. You don't have to say, look, I'm going to add this complete button onto my form so that when the user finishes, they can complete it. It's, yeah, we know how to put a button on the form. It's the code behind that actually does everything that we're interested in. So that's the, that's the important part. 
So I just found that on the internet. I'll send you out the, the PowerPoint with the link, but uh, I thought that was quite good advice. So back onto this. We've had a look at these before. I've just put the, the numbers against it. 14% for analysis, 21% for design. This is the amount of time and the amount of marks that are given to it. 36% of the marks for development, including the testing. So each iteration needs to be tested. And 29% for the design. So if we've got seven months to do it, what we can do, we can split that up. So seven, months, seven, months. seven months left? Or? Well, you've got, about, you've got a bit more than seven months left, but oh, in, in entirety, if we start from June and we ignore August yeah. with some holidays, um, you've got a little bit more than seven months, but I'm thinking contingencies and yeah. things like that. So give yourself a month for the analysis, so that should be done now, and I think most of us are there. About a month and a half to do the design, um, which is where we are now. Uh, development, about two and a half months, um, including the, the testing, and then the evaluation, about two months. Actually, you can probably squeeze a bit out of that. You probably don't need two months to evaluate. Um, it's just really important, so you, you could play around with that. But what I wanted to show you is, um, is how that might work. So I will uh, I'll sit down and I will show you how this might look. So what I'm using here is a site called Tom's Planner. And uh, it's free, and it looks like this. Um, so you've got these orange bars here, they're your activities. And then, uh, if I can find it, where are we? And using this document, which you've all seen before, you can then translate that into time. And time is really important because it's part of the design. And it also means that you can stay on track. So the way we do it, the first section is the analysis. And within there, we've got all these jobs to do. So we can write in here, analysis. Done it before, you can see it's coming up for me. And then what I can do here is I can add a time block. And in that sheet that I just showed, um, the PowerPoint slide, we've got... Ooh, We've got a month to do the analysis. <coughs> so I can drag this out to fill up the whole of June. Now let's say we started on the 1st of June, which is more or less where we would have started and probably you had a bit of extra time. So you might, if you want to give yourself some more time, well, start early, you can just drag that slider back and it will go back indefinitely as far as you need. But, um, okay, so my analysis section is going to take this long. And within that, what I want to do is, uh, or what I should have done, is describe features that make the problem solvable. I thought what I could do, I could type this all out so it's all there, but I thought if you see the, the slowness of it, um, it might help a bit. Um, second thing is to identify suitable stakeholders. Uh, the third thing is to research the problem in depth. Um, fourth thing, essential features. And I want to add a row there, add a row there. Um, so it's quite an easy thing to use, even though it's on the internet. Um, limitations, identify limitations. I'm only going to do one, I'm not going to do the whole project. Um, specify and justify requirements. And then one more, which is to uh, identify measurable success criteria. Well, we know we've got a month to do it. We've broken down our, our, our time frame, we've got a month, so what I can do here is I can add in uh, a time block. I can give it any colour I want, I'll just use a, a lighter blue. Actually, I'll use red because that will show out on the camera a bit better. Um, Identify features that make the problem solvable. Basically, discuss the whole project. Well, I think that might take about a week. Okay. 
Um, suitable stakeholders. Well, that's not going to take very long. Um, I'll use a different colour again. About there. No, that's not going to take me long, is it? Maybe a day. Research the problem in depth. Well, although it says in depth, I don't think that's going to take very long, really. I, because I, I know what I'm doing. I'm building a computer game. I'm building a tool system. All I've got to do is a bit of internet research and type it up. Let's give myself all of that. Identify essential features. Um, okay, so that that might take a, <coughs> a couple of days, maybe, something like that. Identify limitations. Another time block. Limitations, I don't really know what they are. I'm just giving myself a day for that. Specify requirements. So after I've done all this, I need to figure out what it is I'm going to produce for the user. So maybe, maybe I'll give myself a week for that. And then measurable success criteria. Well, what's going to make the project successful? This isn't going to take me long. So we'll have a time block there. And look, I've got a little bit of time left over, which is good. So that means I can go back through these now and I can think, well, maybe I might need an extra day on that because I've got a spare day. I can drag that one across and those two I can do at the same time. So I'm going to do those at the same time, give myself the same amount of time for that. And that <coughs> one I might need a little bit longer for. And what you can do, you can then plan out your entire project. Now what this does, it does two things. The first thing it does is it gives you the mark for uh, your design section which is to um, break the problem down systematically and um, in the evaluation there's something about time management as well. Um, you get judged on time management. Uh, I can't remember exactly where that is. So that, that ticks those two boxes. It gives you the, the grades but it also um, then enables you to go in, let's say we're in mid-July um, and see well, what should we be working on, what should I have done already. So for example, today I should have got the entire analysis complete according to this. Everything should be done, yesterday I should have been finishing off the me measurable success criteria. Was I doing that yesterday? Yes, I was. <laughs> that was all done. So I'm happy with that. Well, not yesterday. Wait, can you take them off? Or do they just sort of stay there? Yeah. So you, you can, um, yeah, th there is a way to uh, Tick these. Done. Yeah, done. And you can you can highlight them if they're if they're not finished yet. And you can go through there. You can do the next part, which is the design. And you can add the rows from this document. Oh, bit too far down. So you can add those rows in. They can obviously be shortened and you can plan those out as well. And that means that, remember you've got to hand this in on Valentine's Day. That's the final, final day. Um, which sounds a long way off, but you're probably not going to do much over August. So don't be unrealistic. Don't, if, you, if you know that working from home is going to be a problem, then don't put too much in in August. But you can play around with the times and make sure that everything's pretty much done before January. So the end of the Christmas holidays, if everything's done by then, then you can just come back in January and you can tidy things up and, and, and fix it and make it perfect. Would you say it's a bad idea to take like a holiday time off this year? Like when we go back in year two? It, it, it depends on how you work. So Not if well. you if you work really well from home and you're you're motivated and you're committed then I personally I could work through the holidays and a few bits and bobs if I was your age, no problem really. And I, I put that in because I quite enjoy this sort of thing. I don't, if it's my own project and I'm working on stuff, it's quite enjoyable. Yeah. But if you're not like that, then don't pretend you are just to fill out a Gantt chart. Good point. Try and, um, try and be realistic and think, well, how am I going to actually do it? And then you can use the thing as a, a proper planning document in order to um, make sure that you are going to finish on time. So you can squeeze some areas down. So for example, you might squeeze that evaluation down a bit. I'll go back to this. I can find it. You might squeeze the evaluation down to maybe two weeks, which is a bit tight, um, and give yourself a bit of extra time up here. Not as well. So you, you, you've, got, um, you've got more time to work on things. Would it be better yet? Because obviously it says like the development and that is like worth 36%. 
to say like your evaluations on analysis was a bit shit, but like the actual final project was like straight amazing. Like you basically just like you, you did a game and you've come out and it's like basically like Call of Duty, it's amazing, top notch, but everything else is a bit awful. They're not like allowed a bit of leeway to that. You'll fail. Fail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've had students in the past that have done this. The one I keep mentioning is the, uh, the, the, the cryptocurrency wallet. It was brilliant. It was something like 4.6 stars on Google Play, hundreds of thousands of downloads. Brilliant. Really well written. Um, but he didn't write it down. He just didn't write down what he'd done. Uh, he wrote down, you know, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and now it's finished. And there's a tiny line in there that said, oh, I uploaded it to Google Play. It doesn't say that it's a four point whatever star product. It doesn't say how many um, downloads it had. It didn't say the problems that it had and how he overcame them. So all of those things are what the reader sees. They don't see your Call of Duty. They're not. So it could be Call of Duty, it could be just as successful as that. And that'd be great because you won't really need this qualification then. But in order to get the grade, You've got to say, talk about the pain that you've gone through and things that you've fixed and things that you've struggled with. So it would be better to have like a, a finished but not amazing project with great explanation as to how you got yes. to that point than actually a really yes. amazing file cake. Yeah, don't, don't put the emphasis on the, the, the actual the, product. Yeah, professional development. Because what you'll do, you'll get tied up with things and you, yeah. you'll be fine tuning yeah. shadows yeah. and things like that which aren't important. So basically, as long as you can convince them it's good, it doesn't actually have to be good. Yes, exactly. Okay. Convince them it's good. That's what you need to do. Good. You try it really hard. They don't see your <laughs> software. That seems really good. They don't even see the finished project at all. No, uh, what they'll see is they'll see it through your report. So it doesn't even have to work. You just take screenshots and make it look like it works. Well, yeah, I mean, just take screenshots before the error codes pop up. <laughs> if it doesn't work, say it doesn't work. And these are the problems that you faced, and this is what you tried to do to overcome them. Um, and like, give an estimated time frame for how long it would take to make it work. <laughs> so, what, what they'll do, where you'll get your marks, is where you say, This is my design, this is how I tried to implement it, these are the problems I faced, and this is how I tried to overcome them. And where you don't get marks is where you say, This is my design, built, done. That's, that, there's, there's no marks for that. Well, there are, but not, not as many as you should get. So it's all about the misery and the pain, and your report should be long winded and boring. So don't worry about making things exciting to read, make them just long winded, spread out, dull. That's fine, that's perfect, that's how a computer science report should be. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. Shall I stop talking? I see where you're coming from now. Brilliant. Good. Well, that's 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 good. That's Can't impressive.